Hey guys, welcome back to Anchored at Harbor Park. I'm your host, Jason. I'm here with Coach Blair. Hi. Do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself, Blair? No. <laughs> as far as I can, um, I'm Blair. I grew up in a small town of about 3,000, played football, played basketball. I ended up going to a college in Dubuque, Iowa for a year. Decided to transfer out of there, play football at Platteville. Played for about a year and found CrossFit. I was doing CrossFit for about a year. Mr. Jason Ewell and his uh, box star apparel company picked me up. And that's one of the main reasons I moved to Kenosha. So now I'm here coaching everyone. Yes, and we couldn't be more thrilled to have you. Um, but I actually want to dive right back in. So you said you um, started CrossFit at Platteville. Um, and I want to talk to you about this because I think a good amount of um, people might be experiencing this. Um, so you did a lot of your training at your college rec center with a lot of um, non-CrossFit friendly rules. Yeah. Um, so you want to kind of talk to us about that and, and kind of how you had to overcome those to, to stay competitive? Okay, so I started, I was able to go to a normal CrossFit gym for three months before I actually went back to Platteville. But once I got there, it was quite a bit different change. For example, we couldn't drop any weights, or I mean, we weren't supposed to drop any weights mm -hmm. from below, above our knees. Still did, we got away <laughs> with it, luckily. Um, like, it was just hard doing any sort of Metcon whatsoever. Say, like, we have a workout with a barbell, and then we got, like, pull-ups or something. The platforms that we use are on one side of the gym, so we'd have to sprint over to the other side. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the pull-up bar has it's not one of these nice pull-up bars. It had like rubber on it and it was at a slight angle. So you do pull-ups and the rubber like slowly turns. Right, and you have to right. re -grip every single rep. But you know, just stuff like that. Like you can't hog more than a few pieces of equipment. Cause like say if I went back over to the barbell and I had to do more pull-ups, some gym rat, gym rat might hop <laughs> on. And just started ripping out some half rep pull-ups, so. And then I remember things like they put the sign on the, the wall, no, oh. no handstand push-ups. So me and a buddy started doing handstand push-ups there and I don't think anyone else ever has before there, down in like <laughs> a little hallway down by the gym. And then after doing like a few weeks later, they put up a sign, no wall push-ups <laughs> or throwing the ball against the wall because they didn't want like little scuff marks against the wall. So I couldn't work on handstand push-ups in any sort of Metcon unless I went down to the track area right. to work, like do running and handstand push-ups, just go down there to do that. And it's just, it's just time consuming in general. So then <clears throat> let me ask you, like if, if anyone's watching who might be in the same situation, do you have any like recommendations or, or is it kind of like just do your best and, and make the best of your situation or? See the, I mean, in a way, I made the best of my situation. I was able to focus a lot on strength because there weren't any limiters there. I was mm -hmm. like, I could do Olympic lifting all day. I could do strength and stuff. Like, they had all the equipment for that, and like, I don't need to worry about that. So that'd be, like, a good time to work on strength just in right. general. And then, so at, at the end of the day, that's, that's going to be the hardest thing yeah. to develop in the long term. Because get, like, getting aerobic capacity and muscle endurance is a lot easier than getting strength so like getting strength down before you actually come back to the gym will be a lot beneficial Cause because I think you really got your cardio and your muscle endurance in really in the last like yeah. nine to twelve months yeah sure. versus you you've been doing the strength for eight years mm -hmm. exactly yeah so I guess if you're in that situation yeah really prioritize strength you know deadlift squats you can work on your Olympic lifting yeah. stuff just try to get your raw numbers up mm -hmm. um, and then when you're done, when you're out of that situation, then you can focus on the cardio and, and the actual Metcons and stuff. I mean, we were still able to do some Metcons. Like, luckily, they had one rower upstairs. I mean, I couldn't do anything else with the rower unless like, I brought dumbbells up and did them. Like, I did 15.5 dumbbells once up there because I couldn't do anything else with the dumbbells. So I was like, okay, let's do 15.5 of it. So Sweet. So yeah. um, let's transition quick to nutrition. Um, Let's, uh, we like food, we like to eat, right? Yeah. Um, maybe a little more than we should, but yeah. uh, that's besides the point. Why don't you talk to us about uh, just what your diet looks like. You work out a ton, a couple times a day, on average, well, or longer sessions. Yeah, longer um, sessions. So just tell us what that looks like on a normal day. Well, let me start off by saying about five months ago, I would still be eating 
Ben and Jerry's ice cream, going down to Mike's Donuts, getting mm -hmm. donuts like every weekend. You know, not really tr like I, I would track on some days and then I would just not. Kind of like me, you'd be good during the week and yeah. on the weekend just yeah. whatever. And then what happened? I was like, all right, I need to start taking this a lot more seriously because I just getting like. Just getting a stomach ache after eating like three donuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, all right, right, this is enough of that. So I, I'm like, one day I cut out donuts, ice cream. What else is there? Cookies. Cookies, brownies. I, I cut yeah. them all out. Like I went for like a month without them, and it just made it so much easier. And I was able to track consistently because I wasn't eating like random garbage. So once I was able to start tracking, I started at about 40, 30, 30 in terms of macros. So 40 carbs, 30 fat, and 30 protein. And then as the weeks went on, I slowly bumped up my carbs because I was doing a lot more volume. So I'm at about 50 carbs, or 50% or carbs, 25% fat, and 25% protein right now. And I feel like that's made a huge difference because mm -hmm. I've been focusing a lot more on like right. aerobic stuff and just and, being able to And move. especially now that we're in the open, a lot of people don't realize like CrossFit, like the act of doing Metcons runs totally on the glycolytic uh, pathway, which is totally using carbs for energy. Yeah. So like if you're competitive and you're going hard through like an intense workout, you need that carb mm -hmm. um, energy store in your body. So that's super important. Yeah, it's not pasta. It's not a lot of bread. It's through vegetables and <laughs> a little bit of rice and sweet potatoes and healthy greens and then some, some good some starches. Oatmeal. Some oatmeal. That's all right though. Yeah. It's healthy oatmeal. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Where can, uh, where can anyone watch and find you online? It's the, just Blair on Instagram. It's cool. just Blair. At it's just Not Blair. Not just Blair, it's just Blair. <laughs> He's just Blair. It's just Blair. <laughs> it, it's just Blair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can find me at Jason J. Ewell um, on Instagram. And then, of course, find us on, uh, at Harbor Park CrossFit on Instagram. And then Facebook, Harbor Park CrossFit as well. Um, and then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah, follow him. Uh, he's going to do big things this year in the open, right? Yes, that's <laughs> a yes. All right, guys, thank you. See you next week.